my husband's 40th birthday. And he wanted to do something special because, you know, 40 is kind of a big deal. Oh, it went backwards. So I took him to a dive bar. We're enjoying a few drinks when the door flies open and I'm blasted by a wave of cold air, followed by a pack of revelers, all dressed like this. <laughs> so I asked the leader of the pack, what are you doing? It's a Snuggy bar crawl, woo! <laughs> what? This campy infomercial that I saw at 2 o'clock in the morning has turned into something cool and trendy? This is a blanket <laughs> with holes in it. <laughs> this does not compute. So, what does my late night encounter with a snuggy bar crawl have to do with being an entrepreneur? Everything. What I saw that night was a glimpse of people blazing new paths, doing something amazing, like turning a blanket with holes in it into a more than $200 million business. And I think it's kind of exciting, because we live in the age of the entrepreneur where any of us can create something amazing. But before we go on, I want to be clear about one thing. Being an entrepreneur is not a job description. It's a mindset. It represents ingenuity and human potential. It is no longer a matter of a select few out on the fringes doing their thing, but about recognizing the entrepreneur in us all. And entrepreneurs are the engine of our economy. They open up new businesses every day. They create the vast majority of new jobs. But I think, most importantly, entrepreneurs inspire everyone around them to dream bigger and to do more. And we live in hyperspeed, so we need entrepreneurs now more than ever. Because entrepreneurs are the ones that dare to imagine a new future and to take on the world's most daunting challenges. I want to introduce you to someone. Jack Andraka from Maryland. He's running down the aisle, screaming his head off, because he just won an award at the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair. His invention, a pancreatic cancer detection strip that is 100 times more sensitive and 29 times less expensive than anything that exists in the marketplace today. His innovation is going to revolutionize early detection of pancreatic cancer. And the impact of that, oh, it's mind-blowing. And he's 15. Yeah. Entrepreneurs also shake up the status quo. Like my friends over at, at uh, Infinite Monkany, Ben Parsons, they dared to create an urban winery where wine is made in the city, not out at the vineyards and sold in single-serve cans, not just big bottles. Wow, talk about drunk and disruptive. Oh. <laughs> and sometimes, entrepreneurs create those little innovations that change our lives in small and fun ways. Like Max Valverde, who is working tirelessly to help this guy and to eradicate the affliction of bedhead with his super-absorbent shower cap that he, of course, calls morning head. <laughs> Go ahead, laugh. I see some of you obviously need it. <laughs> but it also shows us that, you know, innovation comes in all forms. Tupperware's greatest innovation wasn't the plastic, it was the parties. And the press is always talking about how innovation is dead or lagging. But I don't agree. And in my work as a business owner and an advocate for innovation, I interact with these people and these examples every day. Like the hot straw, created right here in Colorado by Don Miracle. It's the first sustainable, BPA-free, heat-resistant, machine-washable straw designed to fit right into your Starbucks cup. So you get to drink out of a straw and decrease your impact on landfills. Another example, 
all the way in Israel is Ishar Gafni. He's created a bicycle made almost entirely out of cardboard. He's going to be able to sell it for like 20 bucks, giving access to millions of people to transportation, people who couldn't otherwise afford it. And these hotspots of innovation are getting bigger because entrepreneurs elevate everyone around them. A rising tide lifts all ships. And they have one tool in particular that helps them do that. It's actually a tool that we all have. It's the imagination, a place where anything is possible. So I think there's this prevalent model of decision making, and it's based on a, a knowledge and a framework of yesterday. It's what are the facts? What's been done? What's already worked? I would argue that that type of thinking traps you in the finite past instead of the infinite future. And that's how entrepreneurs think. Our, our approach isn't what happened yesterday, sometimes not even what happened today. It's about what's possible tomorrow. And it's all in this magical tool that we have, the imagination. I'm going to prove it to you. Do you remember playing that game as kids called telephone? All right, we're going to play a variation of that today. Ready? I want you to read this carefully. Okay, all of you have a journal, open it up to a blank piece of paper, grab a pen, I want you to write down what I had up on the screen, as much as you can remember, be as descriptive as possible. Do that now. Wow, some of you are really sweating it out. Don't worry, this is, there's no exam. I will mark you down for bad penmanship. You can laugh a little. I'm laughing from up here. I love the little chuckles going on. <laughs> okay. Swap what you have with your neighbor. <laughs> now, is what your neighbor had... <laughs> is what your neighbor had the same or totally different than the original? Now, some of you probably started, couldn't remember, and gave up. And that's all right. That's what most people do. That's fine. But I would argue that you missed a perfectly good opportunity to use your imagination. Now, if you wrote down something slightly or drastically different, then congratulations. You used your imagination to fill in the gaps and create something new. And that is what entrepreneurs do. Entrepreneurs tap their, use their imagination, and in turn, they tap into yours. And they naturally create these ecosystems that draw you in and inspire you. And then you, in turn, create your ecosystem, and you draw her in. And the ideas and the inspiration spread exponentially. And I want you to get out there and unleash your imagination, fill in the gaps, and create something new. Uh, I'm not embarrassed to admit it that just yesterday, I reinvented frozen pizza. <laughs> I'm serious. It was lunch. I went to the kitchen. All I had in my, in my freezer was a frozen pizza, which was way too big for one person. And you know what happens when you bake the whole pizza? You eat the whole pizza. So I reinvented and I made a box that had eight single serve slats with pizzas prepackaged inside of it just for me. I'm serious. You guys are not taking me seriously. I mean it. <laughs> but what I want is for you to get out there and find something that you can create, evolve, fix, 
Take the initiative to share it with a friend. Do the work to build a prototype. Enter it into a competition. Build a website, file for a patent. Take it to the market and bring it to the world. Create your own ecosystem. I dare you.